understanding your subconscious mind so you can manifest anything that you want in your life. Science, psychology, studies prove we run off of our subconscious 95% of our day, so you do the math. We wanna understand and work with this part of our mind since it's our default mode. It's what runs and rules our life, and most people's subconscious minds are working against them versus for them. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you all about your subconscious mind and how to mold it, condition it, program it so it is working for you and in alignment with what you desire to manifest in your lifetime. So why even listen to me? My name is Megan Elise. I am a rapid transformational therapist and clinical hypnotherapist and my schooling and training was like the Harvard of the subconscious mind. I was always big into manifesting and believed in it because it worked for me but when I took my schooling and training it actually made me understand the science underneath manifesting, demystifying manifesting for some people who are like, oh, they just judge that word, but manifesting, we don't turn it on or off. We are physicalizing, actualizing, co-creating, creating in our life based on our thoughts, our beliefs, our habits, and our actions. You're manifesting every single day whether you are intentional about it or not. So you might as well be intentional about it. And one of those ways to be intentional about it is your subconscious mind. So if you can understand the basics of your subconscious, which is what I'm gonna gift you and offer you in this video and actually apply the types of insights that I offer you, you will not only understand yourself better, but you will deepen your relationship with yourself, deepen your relationship with others, understand the world better, and your mental health will improve because manifesting and mental health really go hand in hand. Huge precursor of our mental health is what we think and what we believe about ourselves and what's available to us. And that is the crux of manifesting is your beliefs. So the caveat here, I'm gonna keep it real with you. This is so you can manifest your true heart's desires, not your ego desires, not the wounded desires of you. And if that doesn't make sense at all to you, check out my free offering of my manifestation masterclass where I go over the difference between heart's desires, ego desires, so that you can really be able to understand the difference and why well, I'm trying to manifest this one thing and it's not happening. Okay, well, it's it could be because it's an ego-based desire or it's from a wounded part of you where you only want the very success or accolade because you think it's gonna make you feel good enough and loved and accepted by others. So I'll go into deeper into this into the video, but definitely a very in-depth is that free offering that you can get below in the description box below. As Dr. Joe Dispenza says it, your personality creates your personal reality. And what he's really saying there is your personality, which is made up of your thoughts, your beliefs, your habits, and your actions, is going to create your personal reality. So let's demystify manifesting. It's what you think and what you believe for yourself is really what you're gonna be able to achieve, accomplish, and do. So we have conscious thoughts about ourselves. It's important to understand we have two different parts of our mind, two major parts, our conscious mind and our subconscious unconscious. So our conscious desires of what we want, our conscious thoughts of like, oh, well, of course I do think I'm good enough and worthy, but like, mm, let's be really honest with ourselves here because you can't shift anything you're not aware of and you wanna become aware of your subconscious narratives, your subconscious imprints, your subconscious programs. So what are even these words that I'm saying? Well, it's important to understand between the ages of zero and seven, you're in a theta brainwave state and you haven't yet developed those conscious, rational, logical thinking processes that you do have beyond that age of seven and mostly after 14, where if someone told you the moon was made out of cheese when you're below the age of seven, you would have believed them because you don't have that rational, logical process to be like discerning, mm, no, that's not actually truth. So what happened to you in the environment around you between that age of zero seven, you started to develop narratives around love, around money, around success. So for example, if you always saw your parents working really, really hard, you could create a subconscious narrative around work that you have to work really, really hard to get by. 
okay? And your imprints, your subconscious imprints, what you internalize about what others say about you or what you take on how they're acting and behaving around you becomes a subconscious imprint. So if your parents were never around because they were always working, but you couldn't understand that is what they were doing because they loved you, but because they weren't present and they were absent, you imprint in your mind, okay, I must not be good enough or worthy of someone's love because my parent is not there. So from the age of zero seven and seven to 14, your needs need to be met by the people around you. Your needs of love, care, attention, validation. And if they're not met, you start to create these subconscious imprints, what you think and feel about yourself and these subconscious conditions as well as subconscious programs. So for example, if I people please, if I put other people's needs ahead of mine, then I'll be loved, then I'll be cared for, then I'll be respected. So now you have the subconscious program to do that. And of course now in adulthood that follows you. Your subconscious narratives, stories, imprints follow you in adulthood they're conditioned within you the great thing is though you can program them out you can condition anything else in because how your subconscious works is it learns through repetition so things become subconscious when you're younger but they can also become subconscious when you're older just like driving a car you weren't a baby when you drove a car you learned when you were probably a teenager and through repetition you got really good at it so now you're not thinking about turning the signal light putting on the gas like especially if it's a standard you're not thinking of all those things it's so subconscious you just naturally do it so you can change your subconscious programming which is so integral for manifesting because you can consciously desire and want all the things but if you have subconscious programs that say love is painful because that is another function of your subconscious mind it is to move you away from pain and towards pleasure that's an evolutionary process in our brain to keep us alive is to move us away from pain so if you unintentionally unknowingly subconsciously place pain towards love okay well here you go you self-sabotage relationships here you go you don't even get into relationships but you have this heart's desire of wanting to be in a relationship yet subconsciously your mind will always overrule it and overwrite it so it's rewriting these narratives you know how people will say well i was raised this is your subconscious conditioning and programming how you were raised so you already know partly your subconscious programs but subconscious sub means below consciousness so there's probably a lot of blind spots in regards to what you do believe about love success wealth and money or what you want to manifest in life the three most common subconscious limiting beliefs. So you can have liberating beliefs, you can have limiting beliefs. And we're probably not very aware of what our limiting beliefs are, but you'll really start to, when you become aware of your own, you will like cringe when you hear other people say theirs. Like when people are like, oh, the like housing market, like no one will be able to get a house in this market. It's like, A, you're putting that out into the world and out into the universe. You're further ingraining this story that you're not capable to make massive amounts of money. Where'd you learn that, right? So there's so much wealth out in the world, but you're only focusing on the lack of wealth. That is showing you your subconscious programming, your subconscious limiting beliefs. Hold a mirror up. This is great. This is such a gateway to personal development, to limitlessness to your potential because you need to clear and shift these parts of you so you can manifest and actualize and physicalize the success the love the, the dreams that you have on your heart this needs to all line up your heart your conscious your subconscious all need to be in alignment with each other so that your mind is working for you if you have these visibility fears if you feel like you can't use your voice all of this there's something underneath that it is your subconscious programming your life experience is all because of the roots of what is going on underneath and you have the power to shift and to change all that your subconscious mind's job is to move you away from pain and towards pleasure so you want to really attach good high elevated emotions to the very things that you want so for success 
and career, if you believe it's gonna be really hard and grueling, um, that sounds pretty painful to me, starting to shift these narratives that the level of success I want gets to be in alignment with my energy, my, le my beliefs, my values. Like actually start to write down what it is that you want and you get to decide how you get to have it. If you're like, no, Megan, like you have to work really, really hard and hustle and grind to the bone, I'm gonna call you out. That is the subconscious limiting belief. And you're gonna create that for yourself because that is how you believe success is gonna happen. Another great subconscious hack is to like seek for evidence in the collective. So to shift my own wiring and programming around working really, really hard to be successful, I put it out that, okay, in alignment with who I am and my beliefs and my energy and values, I can be successful. So I started to then see people would come into my reality of like working barely any hours, but like super in integrity, transparency, authenticity, do what they love and making massive amounts, more amounts than I could even imagine or fathom. So this is a subconscious hack. Now my subconscious and your subconscious can see that this reality actually exists. You will find evidence for anything of what you don't want, of limiting beliefs and of liberating beliefs in the way you do wanna operate in life. Your subconscious mind job is to keep you in the familiar because it's safe. It's safe, it's what you know, and away from the unfamiliar. Even if the familiar is anxiety, even if the familiar is not feeling good enough because it's like you're, you're comfortable in this space, you're comfortably uncomfortable in this space, right? So get comfortable with being uncomfortable in the unfamiliar. You can make anything unfamiliar familiar, anything familiar unfamiliar. So if you're in a neighborhood where you desire to be, if you're shopping at a store that you at the moment can't yet afford, start to say, I'm making this my familiar. I'm making this my familiar. This gets to be my familiar because you need to start to shift what your familiar is. Your actions are led by your beliefs and your thoughts. So shifting your thoughts and your beliefs will shift your actions. So many of us think, oh, we need to shift our actions. So it's all this force and this push and this willpower versus going back to your subconscious beliefs, narratives, and imprints that you wanna believe about yourself, about what's available to you, that is what's gonna shift your actions. You better believe if you believe I am capable, I have everything within me to achieve my dreams, you're going to act and behave in a different way versus I can't, I'm not good enough, um, other people, my success depends on society, the government and other people. Okay, you're then just gonna let your external world dictate how you show up in the world. We hear it all the time. It's like the power of our thoughts, but you just hear it. You're just hearing this knowledge. Apply the knowledge, integrate it, embody it. There's a big, big difference. Don't just take these insights and be like, oh, cool, I know a lot. Great, you know a lot. I know I should, I know, I know. Knowing gets you nowhere. You need to apply and integrate these. So what I said, write the list, <laughs> write down what you want to believe about how money gets to show up constantly, consistently. And you might be like, well, I don't believe that yet okay what's a bridging thought I'm allowing more money to flow into my life you're here you want to be here sometimes we need to build that bridge gift yourself a bridging thought your mind learns by repetition so repeat this every day right in the morning and right at night when you're naturally a theta brainwave state you're only able to make subconscious shifts and change through repetition and when you're in a theta brainwave state so if you're not working with a clinical hypnotherapist working with yourself in those windows 30 minutes right before you wake up fully in that beta brainwave state this is below alpha so it's deeper than meditation I always suggest look in the mirror because this is how you shift your self-concept and self-identity and hearing yourself and seeing yourself like, yes, I get to be a smart businesswoman. Yes, I am financially literate because your beliefs you get to make and then they make you. Another way your subconscious works is the more you focus on and what you focus on, the more you will see evidence of, the more you will get proof of it. Everyone can view money and success in a certain way and how you focus on it 
is how your subconscious is going to work for you, how your mind is going to show you, see, yeah, look, there is a ton of debt or see, yeah, look at all the successful people. I just see so many successful people now. I see so many rich, wealthy, successful people making money in a fun, authentic, aligned way because that is how I desire for it to flow into my life. So that's what I focus on, but that's what I see. I don't hear conversations. I barely see people complaining about money and success because I've shifted the way my programming and conditioning about success and dreams and wealth is. Also understanding that your mind responds to pictures and images. This is why visualization and utilizing your imagination is so powerful to use. We're the only species on the planet that has an imagination, utilize it. So imagine and dream and see what you desire happening. Let your mind see the pictures. Your mind doesn't know the difference between real or imaginary. So imagine it and see it. Visualizations are so, so powerful. I also have a video up here to help shift your programming around money. Money. This is based on research of the top beliefs that successful wealthy people believe. So how to get this in, repeat it, listen to it over and over and I get you into that theta brainwave state. I induce you into it. So there you go right here. Your mind doesn't care what you tell if it's good, true, false, healthy, unhealthy. It accepts it anyway. So you get to decide what you let in. It will become your filter system of what is happening in your life. Your mind also only works in present tense. So you always want to be working in the present tense. Your point of attraction is in this now. Your subconscious only understands present tense. Like think back before the age of seven, you were so in the present moment. You didn't understand if your mom and dad left that they would be coming back because you're just in the present. So understanding your subconscious, if you have this desire and you're like, it's not coming to me, it's to really look like what are the narratives about the very thing that you want? If it's around love, what narratives do you have about love? If it's about what's available to you, what subconscious imprints do you unfortunately believe about yourself? I'm not capable. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. These are all ones that I had that I really, really had to shift. And that was through getting to the root of where it was stemmed from and came from. And that was through RTT and clinical hypnotherapy sessions. But you also can start to make these connections for yourself and to start to shift them is this repetition of what you do truly want to believe and think and feel about yourself. And sometimes we do need that guidance and we do need someone to support us along the way because this is just such a new world for us. And like to even fathom thinking that what we want is actually available to us is like, nope, because you've been very programmed and conditioned. It's only this one path, there's only one way of life and this societal template of like this nine to five job and like, settle in a relationship and then have kids and like I have those desires of having a loving relationship and having kids too so I'm not judging you if that's where you're at in life or if that's what your desires are but if you really ask yourself what do you really really want I bet you there's a little bit more in there and if this fear of like oh my gosh like it's not available to me, that's a limiting belief or fear of failure. That's another subconscious narrative, like your narrative around failure. I had to shift that too. I now believe failure doesn't exist. It's failure if I don't do. Every failure is a stepping stone to where I'm meant to go. Like you can shift those and change those. Like you so are in control and in power of that. It's just actually taking the time to decide your narratives, your imprints, your stories around love, success, health, wealth, whatever it is that you desire to manifest, writing it down, being so clear on it, and then embodying it and integrating it. And that's through repetition. That's through subconscious work. That's through changing self-identity and self-concepts. And you can do this in the morning, a journal about it, write about it, but also maybe you're guided to have deeper support. I offer all these free videos so that you can start this inner work yourself. But if you're guided for that extra deeper support, we're not meant to do all this on our own and alone. When you shift your subconscious narratives about love, success, health, wealth, money, your subconscious imprints about yourself, you will see your external world shift and change because the lens of your beliefs of what your mind is filtering out for you, what you focus on shifts, mental health improves. It's such a gift to give yourself so truly gift yourself this inner 
work and shifting your life will drastically transform and change you will manifest sometimes things super fast and super quick and sometimes it's more in divine timing i go in deeper on manifesting but i really wanted you to understand just the gist of your subconscious so you can start working with that part of you with that part of your mind you can train your subconscious just like you can train your body just like if you wanted to transform your physical body you have to stay consistent with going to the gym eating nourishing food sleep well this is the same thing with your subconscious with your inner work with manifesting it's the thoughts that you nourish your mind with it's the reframing and deciding what you want to believe and really anchoring that in it's all these little components work with yourself in the morning at night listen to hypnosis recordings work with your subconscious mind repetition consistency theta brainwave state you got this i love you check out different videos on my channel that support you in subconscious shifts how to make affirmations actually work already celebrating your manifestations 